Hi everyone. Not too long ago, I made a video about how to level more efficient as a hunter. In this video, we will be looking at how you can level more efficient as a priest. As leveling consists of three big parts, damage dealing, traveling and downtime, we will look at how the priest performs in each of these fields. Leveling a priest is a unique experience. At first, it might just seem like another caster, however, that's not very accurate. As a priest, you have access to the best leveling talent in the game, Spirit Tap, giving you up to a 100% chance after killing a mob which gives you experience to gain a 100% bonus to your spirit and allowing 50% of your spirit to continue regeneration while you're casting. This allows the priest to achieve 300 spirits at around level 22 with average gear and almost constantly of which 150 is giving you full regeneration to mana at all times, and this is the minimum. This means you won't ever run out of mana, which really makes intellect less of a useful stat. You'll regain your mana so fast, the size of your mana pool doesn't really matter. This also means that your natural health regeneration while just running from mob to mob will give you a fair bit of health. On top of that, you have inner fire to increase armor, a shield to prevent yourself from taking damage and suffering pushback, which by the way really isn't a problem for other reasons, and on top of that you have a strong healing over time. If you can go directly from mob to mob without ever leaving combat, you can keep on killing almost forever. While leveling this priest, I haven't had a single mana break since level 10, apart from when I'm healing in dungeons, as the talent demands you that you deal the killing blow, which you can't do easily while I have to keep everyone alive as well. And this lack of mana breaks is not because I play super conservative and sacrifice damage for less downtime. The talent is just so strong that you never need a mana break. The bulk of your damage should come from wanding. And just as for the hunter, the trick is to weave in auto attacks as well and using dots on top of that. If you have a strong wand and a weak two-hander, Weaving in auto attack, which delays your next one shot, might mean less DPS. However, doing an auto attack gives you a GCD which you can spend on an instant spell, such as inner fire, renew, shield, or reapplying dots. This because shooting your wand activates the global cooldown, while auto attack does not. When you start wanting again, there is a short delay, which I think is about half a second before you start shooting again just like the draw time on a hunter's bow. I suppose that's in the game, so you can't just kite a mob and use auto shoot without standing still. So what you normally do is put inner fire and shield on yourself, then dot two targets and start wanding one down. While the mob reaches you, you shoot twice with your wand, use auto attack and an instant spell such as renew, and then you press auto shoot again, about 0.3 seconds after you casted your instant spell. Then you keep going like this. You want to have a slow hitting staff and a one with high DPS. Usually, wanding twice and doing one auto attack and one instant spell before restarting the short cycle works just fine. If you have a decent hard hitting staff, weaving like this is a DPS increase. If you have a pretty weak two hand compared to your wand, it's at least a decrease in lost DPS whenever you need to use an instant spell. You should avoid using casted spells during combat. If you have pulled more than you can handle, use your AoE fear to buy yourself some time. The damage over time spell you're using, Shadow Word Pain, is a strong one. With an 18 seconds duration, it fully benefits from your spell power. You can even increase the dot by 6 seconds from talents, which I recommend doing. You should put every other points in either improved wand damage for a total 25% more damage from wands or in the spirit tap talents until both are filled out. Then go for a longer duration of Fred Shadow World Pain, improved renew and improved shield. Then really go for whatever you feel like. It might be useful to have autons for auto shoot cooldown and auto attack cooldown, however it's not difficult to go without these. Travel time! Priests have no movement increasing abilities. However, as they are very good at chain killing, you should always grind on the way. 
By doing so, you can level between 11 and 20 almost entirely in Silverpen Forest instead, which I find is easier as there is less people leveling there, the zone is much smaller than the Barrens, the mobs are more dense, and the quests are nearer each other. At around 14 or 15, I do some quests in the Barrens to have all the quests for the Wailing Caverns ready whenever it's time to do that dungeon. The fastest I've leveled to 20 was done on a priest. If you manage the chain killing efficiently, know where and how to do the quests and get a good wand, you have the potential to be a killing machine. It took about 12 hours by the way. And speaking of wands, enchanters can make a very strong wand already at level 5, which you absolutely should get. They can make another wand at 13 as well. These two wands are what makes the priest go from good to, well, maybe even the best leveler between 1 and 20. Useful tips. Another very useful tip, which will benefit every single class that needs experience and can use intellect or spirits. At level 18, you can pick up the quest Deathstalkers in Shadowfang from the Sepulchre in Silverpine Forest. Running into Shadowfang Keep, we see a gate right in front of us, and on the other side of this gate, we see the Deathstalker, to which we turn in the quest. You might think you need to find a way around the gate to the other side, however, you can reach the NPC through the gate and turn in the quest this way. <laughs> this gives you a pair of green shoulders with plus 5 intellect and plus 5 spirits at level 18, cloth shoulders by the way. The only other pair of shoulders, at least on Horde's side at this level, are obtained from the final event in Valen Caverns, which is way harder to manage and is probably very hard for a group of level 18s. Now, as for the staff, a very good idea is to complete Valen Caverns as soon as you can. There is both a rare elite fairy dragon, which usually drops a blue wand, and the staff you get from the quest has great stats and great damage. Actually, the damage on this staff is so great even warriors should choose it. Well, that was the key points I have regarding efficient priest leveling. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have any ideas on how I can improve my videos, or if you want me to cover a special thing, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.